buddy, Mr. CCDV here. Figured I'd make gumbo tonight. Sounds good to me. So, I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do that. Here's all my mise en place. I haven't cut anything up yet because I'm going to show you a couple of items. Alright. But, this should be fun. And, uh, well, it's going to be fun for me whether you guys like it or not. Ah. <laughs> so, what we start with is salt pork. Now, I'm going to make a roux, okay, in order to make a roux, you have to have a fat and a thickening agent, some kind of flour, or in my case, I'm going to be using some kind of starch because I'm making this gluten-free. So, if everything comes out correctly, we should have a roux in about an hour. Now, let me explain. A roux is a thickening agent used for sauces and things like that. Well, I am going to be using it as a flavoring agent rather than a thickening agent. That's what the filet is for. Okay. Now, the, um, the roux, there are three standard types of roux, white roux, a blonde roux and a brown roux and in this case because I'm making gumbo I'm going all the way to brick red roux which is almost impossible to do on the stovetop which is why I set the oven to 350 degrees once I have the uh, fat and the flour mixed together I will put that into the oven for about an hour and when that's done it will be a brick red roux. I'll be uh, cutting vegetables and, and things like that until that roux is complete. So, let's go ahead and start off and have some fun. So I've already set the oven to 350 and I've already got the chicken in there cooking away with my own version of a Cajun spice which, uh, well, basically just means my own regular uh, spice mixture with cayenne pepper added to it. <laughs> I have to be honest with you, I like it that way. Now this salt pork is uh, pretty traditional as far as gumbos go, but what you want to do instead of just using it like bacon, because it's made from the same part of the pig, Instead of using it like bacon, what you want to do is render out as much of the fat as you can without burning the pieces. And we're not going to actually use any of the meat and fat pieces in the roux. We're only going to use up the rendered fat. However, in order to do that without burning the pieces, because that burnt flavor will stick in the uh, fat, we're going to use about a cup full of water and run this on low temperature for about 20 minutes to get as much of the fat out of it as we possibly can. So I will add the water to the pan and then add these to the water. And once that fat is rendered out, see if I can figure out how to uh, edit a video so you guys aren't bored just watching me cut things up. All right, I'll be back. All right, folks, I know I showed you how to cut an onion before, but let's go ahead and do this again. Let's see, from the root ball, you wanna leave that intact and just cut off the end where the flower grows up out of the ground, okay? So cut that end off. Put that in your little trash can over there. And then what you want to do is slice it right down the middle here, okay? And you want to go the long ways so that you have all the radial cuts all right there still, all right? So you see all the, the flowering layers of the onion right here? That's what you want to see. You're going to have that part face down on the board. I've taken off some of the paper, but this last layer is still kind of rubbery, so I'm going to take that one off as well. And now, there are two ways to cut an onion. This is the way I was taught in culinary school. You take your knife, 
parallel to the board, put your hand flat on top, and then you slice through two or three times, and then cut straight down. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I prefer the radial cut, so instead of cutting through this way, and then cutting down this way, I'm going to go from right there at the edge of the root ball, and I'm going to dig my blade right in. Now this is going to be on the board, so it'll be hard to see. Dig the blade right in, and then slide it down so that you have like kind of a blooming onion kind of thing. If you go to a restaurant, this is well, they have tools to make the blooming onion, but this is how you would make it at home if you don't have a specific tool for it. Okay, so you dig the knife in, straight down, and that way you don't have to go through a long way with your hand flat on top. You just go along with the radius of the, the flowering layers of the onion, and you're all set. And then, you make them as thick or as thin as you want, and me, personally, I like them as thin as possible. So, I go with about an eighth of an inch. That way, when they cook down in the pan, you can't feel them in your mouth, and I, honestly, I can't stand the taste of, or the feel of onion. I love the taste of onion, I can't stand the feel of it. It drives me absolutely crazy. So, I keep mine as thin as possible. And that way when I cook them down, they basically just disappear in my recipe. That is my preference. So, I've got uh, three more halves of an onion to do here, folks. So I'll cut this off right here and come back to you guys in just a few minutes, alright? This is what it's going to look like while you're rendering the fat out of the uh, salt pork. Alright, that's mostly water still. But we're getting the fat rendered out of there, and as soon as the water evaporates, you'll know it. You'll be able to hear the, the hissing and popping. All right, so that's what it's going to look like while the water is evaporating out. Now, to get as much fat out of this as you as you want, you're going to want to keep a lid on it. Okay, so keep the lid on it, and then once a lot of the water has evaporated, then you can take the lid off, and we have mostly fat left over. All right, that's what it's going to look like for the first 10 minutes. And that, my friends, is what it's going to look like. All that liquid in the bottom of the pan is the fat that we wanted. And we're going to use that for not just the roux, but for also cooking down the vegetables. So, we've got everything we want. And those brown bits of uh, pork fat actually taste pretty good as a snack once they cool down a bit. All right, it's time to make the roux. Remember, the oven is set to 350. We're gonna leave it in there for an hour or so until it turns into a red roux. All right, so what I'm doing now is measuring out the four tablespoons of flour. And I will measure out the four tablespoons of fat as well as soon as I set this flour down. But, Normally, when you make a roux in order to thicken a sauce, you want to melt the fat first and then add the flour to it. In this case, since we're not using it as a thickening agent, we're only using it as a flavoring agent, then it can be done uh, the easy way by putting the flour in first. So, that's what I'm doing, and then I'm going to mix the rendered pork fat to it with my trusty whisk. Let's go on over here. You can see I got the bits out. They're over here in the bowl. I'm going to start snacking on those while I'm cooking the rest of the gumbo. Yum. <laughs> I guess that's probably not a good thing to brag about, is it? Oh well, it is what it is. And that leaves just enough fat in there to cook the vegetables now, which is 
wonderful. I'll show you the vegetables here in just a minute when I get this through into the oven. So, you're going to want to mix up the flour and the fat and make it into a paste like so. Get any lumps out if there are any, but there aren't any lumps in that one. Put that in there, open up the oven, and put the Dutch oven into the oven. And one hour from now, we will have a brick roux. It'll be fantastic. I'm going to start cooking down the vegetables while I do that. You see, I've cut them up, so I've got two parts onion, one part carrot, one part uh, bell pepper. So once I get those into the pan and start reducing those, I'm gonna cut up the andouille sausage and the cooked chicken. It's all going to go into the same uh, pot once uh, I get it out of the oven. All right, one thing you need to know about Cajun food. Uh, the standard uh, trinity of vegetables is slightly different. All right, normally in French cooking, it's onion, carrot, and celery. In this case, it's onion, carrot, and bell pepper. So, that's uh, sometimes called the Cajun Trinity and sometimes called the unholy Trinity, and I don't know why, but it's still the same. And so you cut off the vegetables exactly the same way. You want two parts of onion to one part of carrots and one part of bell pepper, okay, for this recipe. All right, friends, as you can see, I just got the roux out of the oven, and it is perfectly red. That is exactly what we're looking for. Again, this is not for thickening anything. This is for just flavor, flavor only. Now look, we've had the vegetables reducing for an hour, and look how beautiful they are. These vegetables are ready to go in the pot. Now I'm going to turn this pan up to screaming hot so I can get the andouille sausage and the chicken real, real brown and get the, all that flavor added to the sauce once it's all done. Alright folks, check back with me in just a few minutes and we'll have all this done. <laughs> Alright folks, I have rounded out the stew with homemade beef broth, or beef stock I should say. I used beef marrow bones to make the beef stock. That's a whole different show though, you're not getting that today. So, I've rounded that out. The last ingredient to go in, and I'm not going to put it in this second, but the last ingredient to go in is the filet. All right, the filet powder. That's gonna thicken it up without having to use okra, which I don't mind okra, but I already got plenty of vegetables in there, so I don't need any, so I'm gonna use the filet powder instead. Now I'm gonna cook the shrimp separately and that way we can put the shrimp over the chicken and andouille sausage gumbo. But we've got a seafood allergy in the house, so they have to be cooked separately, kept separate from the rest of it. Now, this is a gluten-free, dairy-free, and, well, seafood-free, unless you throw it on there. <laughs> this is a completely safe and totally good recipe for diabetics and for gluten intolerance. I'm uh, making the rice right now because we're at 7,000 foot elevation. Rice doesn't cook in a rice cooker or a pot up here very well. I mean, it does, but oof, what a pain. So I'd rather use the pressure cooker, plus it goes faster. So that's it, folks. Put the rice down in a bowl. Put your gumbo over it. You're all done. Enjoy your meal, and I hope you enjoyed cooking as much as I do.